So I love that they bounced back and won 10 8, 6 5, and 6 4. Would I have liked it to be a shutout? Oh, for sure, I take it. But do I like seeing Julio go 5 for 5 and hit a bomb and be clutch? For sure. Do I like Cal coming in and pinch in and hit a bomb? Mm-hmm. For sure. Do I like seeing Rojas finally look like he's figuring something out and hit and have a couple of hits? For sure. So, I look, I, that, that's the one thing that's bothering me about this whole thing is that we get texting all the time, and people are so negative, and people are, you guys aren't saying this, you guys aren't saying that. They need to do this to win. I'm not saying your concerns aren't real. All I'm saying is that you got a team that's won 7 to 10. You got a team that's a half game out of a wild card spot, yet a bunch of people I talk to and that text in, all they want to do is complain about what they're not doing. What they are doing or what they have done has gotten themselves back into the playoff race. We're not going to ignore their faults or things that they need to get better on. I would love to see them close out games better, but I do like that the bats are getting hot. I like that the bats are supporting the pitching staff when the pitching staff has supported this team all year. And I would love to see it all come together at once and them look completely dominant. But we know that this isn't a dominant roster. We've talked about this. We didn't do enough at at the trade deadline. Okay, so if they didn't do enough at the trade deadline, if the pitching has been carrying this team and you've been complaining about the bats, enjoy the moment. The bats are hot now. The pitching's struggling. All right, boom. Offense has the defenses back. It's just when I hear people talk about – I want to hear people complain about – the Mariners and how they win, I look at them and I go, you must not really play sports, huh? Mm. I've never coached a game, played in a game that we've won, and it's ugly. And we get into the locker room, and coaches complain about all the things that, things that we didn't do. Now we got to correct some things, but enjoy it. Your team is winning ball games right now. They're in the mix. That's my gripe. Thank you for letting me get it off my chest. I appreciate it. I don't you. think you're done with your gripe, though, because you also had some good stuff to say about Julio. And, look, I don't mean to press buttons and keep it going, but I do think that connected to this idea of appreciate what you have and appreciate what's happening is appreciate Julio. Yes. Julio. Oh, my God. You got me going again. Julio. Let's talk I know about how to do my Julio. Job. <laughs> Thank you. You're so good at your job. <laughs> let's talk about Julio. The same guy. We paid him too much. We paid him too early. Where where you at now? Where you at now? My man has the best average on the team, the most RBIs on the team, second when it comes to home runs, the most hit on the team. I'm saying, like, just the way that you guys overreact to stuff, okay, it uh, it baffles me a little bit because you got to realize – it's a long season, and you and I have the responsibility to come up here and tell you guys what we're seeing every single and I've day. I've certainly been critical oh, yeah. before. And, and, and we've been critical before, but it's just when good things happen, man, enjoy the good times, man. This is a fan base that only been to the playoffs once in 21 years. Once in 21 years, you've been to the playoffs, and you have a team that is not many expectations. I understand beginning of the, the season, World Series type of team. We know who they are now. We know who they are. They're not a World Series type of team. They barely have a roster that can sneak them into the playoffs. So if we understand who this team is 100 and something games into the season, why are you still complaining about the way that teams win? They are winning. I will take a win, 1-0, 14 innings. We're using pitchers. Mike Ford is pitching on the mound. I don't care. <laughs> He's got a strikeout. Right? I'm just taking wins, man. I'm just I'm just so tired of hearing it, man. And that's that's my rant. Unless you got something else that's going to get me going, I, I think I'm good, and we can get back to uh, the, well, the I don't analysis. Know. I mean, I kind of want to get this going. Someone <laughs> said, I'm loving this. Can we do What's Bug and Bump, which is what they do in the afternoon with What's Bug, bug and Bob with uh, with Bob. Someone said, get us, Bump. Drag us. <laughs> man, can we just take the wins? Honestly, the thing to me that really gets me, because, again, I've been critical, too. Someone said, this guy's spitting. I did a radio-friendly edit of that one. <laughs> Three six zero. Oh, careful there. Um, I think the you know the Julio point is what really gets me because I completely agree and I think it's so good. This is why I love hosting with not only someone who has played professionally but someone who's coached because it does add a little bit of context. I'm someone who's written. I've only ever been a reporter. I've never been a professional athlete. I'm used to looking at things through a critical lens. I am used to looking at things not necessarily as a fan even, even though I'm local, and saying, like, where do they need to get better? What needs to happen? How did this win almost not happen? Like, you know what I mean? It's just what you're used to. And it's very important to say, look, don't forget to live in the moment. Don't forget to look at the wins. Don't forget to do this. But, Bump, what really gets me is your point about Julio, because that's what I find myself most fired up about, too, Mm -hmm. is, is, you know, you saying, hey, how many tech, and to your credit, all season long, even when Julio was in a little bit of a, a slump at times, you were saying, this guy is special. This guy is talented. You're saying it too. He has set the bar for himself really high, but these texts and these questions and these fears about did they pay him too soon, 
hey, this is what a superstar looks like. Yeah. You it's, know what I mean? If you don't look at Julio and, and see the superstar potential, um, then I don't know how you're viewing this young man. Now, now, this isn't to say that Julio is fixed for the rest of the year and he's going to stay hot the way he's been hot. This man is playing probably the best baseball on the professional level he's ever played in the last two seasons he's been in the league. My man is hot right now, okay? But it's the, it's the reaction of fans who are so quick to give up on somebody or to pigeonhole them as this, knowing that in life and in sports, there are going to be ups and downs. Now, if the Mariners were still down at this point, all right, and Julio is still down and uh, the pitching is still carrying this team, then I would be like, okay, you have the right to come out and gripe about some things and get some frustrations off your chest. But the way that people gave up on a 22-year-old so quickly is what mm -hmm. baffles me. Mm -hmm. and like, this is a season. This isn't... This isn't football. Football, you come out 0-3, 0-4, you ain't making the playoffs. All right, now you're, you're playing for draft picks. This is baseball. This is the, the sport where you fail the most. My man essentially essentially is, is hitting 27% at the plate. At no other occupation do you do something 27% of the time, and you're considered one of the best. And especially for the people who really know baseball, right? Deep, deeper than I even can even fathom or understand baseball. I like baseball. I love baseball. I followed it my whole life. But there are the nerds that have the notebooks and all the, all the data and all that stuff. I'm just looking at what do you see? The average fan, you see Julio, you don't see a star. I don't know what you're looking at. Mm.